The results are in, and I've got some information for you about which colorful fine liners are awesome and which ones aren't so great. Hi everybody, today I am going to be giving you the kind of the wrap up, the finale of my colorful fine liner Thunderdome. For those of you who don't know what that is, what I do is I take some time over the months and I review a bunch of pens in a category and then I do a big testing which I did this last Sunday and I'll link it up above in the cards if you want to go watch the replay of the live stream where we test a whole bunch of different situations with these pens. We get my daughter who's a lefty to come help and then we rate it on a scale of one to well, zero to five eggplants and so a total score of eggplants of 35 and then there's also some other information like number of pens or number of colors, kinds of tips, availability, things like that. Get it all compiled and then I'm gonna talk about which pen in our subjective rating style rated the highest, which rated the lowest, which is my favorite, which is not necessarily the highest rated one so that you can have this information. Now, if you are interested in seeing all of the data, the pen site, I have it all on a Google Sheet. It will be available along with pictures of swatches of all of those pens that I own so that you can compare them to each other and look at the colors and see how vibrant they are compared to each other and make your own decisions. This all information is to help you make your own decisions, but I'm gonna be giving you my, my, my scientific figured out shit. Before we go into the ratings, how these pens did and rate them from the lowest score to the highest score, I want to give you a few pens that were either the top or the bottom of the barrel in a couple of categories. First of all, to compare price. Now, I did not go for the individual pricing of these pens. I looked at the cost of the packs that I could find. Most of these were on Amazon. A few of them were not if they're not available on Amazon, but then I divided it by the number of pens to get you the per unit price based on those packages because you're almost always going to pay less for a pen if you buy it in a pack than you are if you're going to buy it individually. The most expensive pen out of all of the ones that I have tried was the Papermate Liquid Flare. You get eight of them for $12.32 on Amazon, which works out to $1.54 a pen. The least expensive, which is not a surprise if you were watching that live stream, is the Pen Plus Gear fine liner that is carried at Walmart. The pack of these was $3.97 for 20 pack, which worked out to 20 cents per pen. So for color variety, we actually had a tie for the least amount of colors. Both the Pilot V Razor Point and the Paper Mate Liquid Flare only come in eight colors, by far the least amount of colors. Most of them hovered between 20 something and 40 something colors. But by far the most amount of colors are the Arteza fine liners. Now this is the 48 pack, but they actually come in a pack of 72 if you wanna order that one. Now most of these pens have colors that are they tell you the color either on the pen in a number or a name or you can find a color guide from the company that tells you the names and the numbers or the colors of the pens but there were a few of them that don't have any names any numbers you just have to figure it out for yourself and I thought I would highlight those ones because I find that to be really fucking obnoxious it's also not a surprise to me that two of the three of those are the cheapest pens on this list which are the pen plus gear and the Arteza those do not have names or color numbers the other one is is the Artist Loft fine liners, which are not as cheap as some of the other fine liners, but they are a store brand, they're a Michaels brand. For the rest of the information, for whether they're dry safe, whether they have neons, whether the caps stay on, uh, all of the other things, the tip sizes, all of that, you can go find the Google Sheet on the blog post at cindyguntrabaldo.com. I will have it linked down below so you can go look at all of the information in detail. But for the sake of the length of this video, I'm not going to go into it for every single pen, but we are going to talk about each pen now and how it's scored and how I feel about it. And the lowest scoring pen with a score of 17 eggplants out of 35 is the Zebra Zensations Fine Liner. The reason that this pen scored so low was because for one, it's super short and the ridge right here gets you right where you hold it. So it's very uncomfortable to hold. It also does not dry quickly at all. It bent very quickly underneath my heavy hand. It did score very, very well on bleed through and on whether it left ridges, but it's lower, it's lower scores on scratchiness on all of those things, dragged it right down to the bottom of the heap. Other things of note to know about this pen, it was not highlighter safe, but it was resistant to water, which was very strange to me. It did pass the lefty test and it is not the most expensive pen, but it is up there as one of the most expensive pen, clocking in at $33.14 for a pack of 24, 
or $1.38 a pen. The second lowest scoring pen with a score of 18 eggplants out of 35 is the Sharpie Art Pens, which makes me sad because the permanent Sharpie pens and the permanent Sharpie markers are some of my favorites to letter with, but these guys just don't hold up compared to some of the others. This pen scored a zero on dry time. Even after 10 seconds, it's still smeared which was just a wreck and it scored okay in some other areas but it was mostly mediocre several twos there was a three the only it only scored once and that was a five and that was because it didn't leave any ridges on the other side of the paper when you write with it it is water resistant but also not highlighter safe as a matter of fact it was so not highlighter safe that in my notes it says oh hell no it also did not pass the lefty test for my daughter when it comes to cost this pen is middle of the road it came in at about a dollar a pen and the number of colors is kind of like in middle of the road too is 21 and it's readily available but overall kind of a disappointing pen from a brand that I usually love the shit out of. After telling you about some of the other areas where this pen was kind of the worst in terms of cost in terms of color selection it shouldn't be a surprise that Papermate Liquid Flares came in with 19 out of 35 eggplants and a big part of that was the dry time. The dry was zero. It was like soaking wet basically the entire time. And it also bled through, got a one on that. Almost every other score was in the middle somewhere. This didn't pass the highlighter test, didn't pass the lefty test. These pens are very, very vibrant and I can see why people might really like them. But at the same time, they are very, 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 I hate to say it, they're moist. They are very moist pens. I used these in my planner once for a week and it bled through so badly. I was horrified. Coming in at 22 out of 35 eggplants, and this is tied with another pen for being in this spot, is the Pen Plus Gear Fine Point Markers. These are the pens that are available at Walmart. This pen scored extremely well on dry time. It scored a five. It dried damn near immediately, but in terms of durability, it basically bent into a right angle when I was writing with it, so we gave it a one. They are the cheapest pens. You get 20 colors of these for four bucks which is pretty amazing they do pass the lefty test because they dry so quickly but they do not pass the highlighter test the next pen also scoring 22 out of 35 eggplants is the Tombow twin tone markers now these pens are unique out of this entire group in that they have two tips which in and of itself is something really cool there is a bullet tip that's really broad and then there is the fine end we did not test the broad tip because that was not really in line with the other pens that we were testing but it is something handy with these pens these pens scored four on both whether or not they like spooged like let lots of extra ink out they did not they also were comfortable while you held them and they were super durable the area that they got a zero on though was because of my heavy hand this pen I could basically read it on the other side not because it bled through but because of the indentation so if that bothers you these are not the pens you want to be using to write especially if you're heavy-handed it was very similar to a super pointy gel pen in that sense they did pass the lefty test but we also tested on top of colored pencils I'm not bringing this up for everything but the reason I'm bringing this up for these guys is because we wanted to see if you could write on top of colored pencils with this pen and have it work and in the notes it says fuck no because you like absolutely could not write on top of colored pencil with this pen this these pens come in some absolutely stunning colors that work really well with the tombow dual brush markers in two different packs they cost 1350 for a pack of 12 and you can get them at michael's and use a coupon on them so that's pretty decent now, there are four different pens that came in with 24 out of 35 eggplants and i'm listing these in no particular order the first one is the artist loft fine liners from michael's these pens were almost the, I would say the Artist Law Fineliners are probably the most mediocre pens in the entire set. All of the scores were either fours or threes, just like literally right in the middle. They're very consistently not fantastic, but not terrible. They are not highlighter safe, but they do pass the lefty test. And they're kind of mediocre in price too. They're 20 bucks for a pack of 24, 24 colors, about 83 cents a pen. But these are some of the least available pens as you can only find these at Michael's and occasionally online if you dig around, but pretty much just at Michael's. The second set of 24 out of 35 eggplant pens are the Arteza Fineliners. Now these pens, Pens, they scored the highest in terms of color count at 72. They also were the second least expensive at about 32 cents a pen. You can get the 72 pack for 23 bucks on Amazon, which is pretty epic. They scored pretty highly on bleed through, on whether they le left ridges, and on dry time. They dried super quickly, but durability, these pens bent 
which is what dragged their score down. They are highlighter safe. They do pass the lefty test. Not all of the caps actually match the pen colors, whereas for a lot of these other pens, the majority of the caps match the pen colors. And that's very difficult. So the thing that I find obnoxious about these pens, and especially because they come with so many colors, is that if you wanna be able to know what color you're choosing, you have to keep them in the exact order in the trays they come in and then swatch them in that exact order so that you can reference them. And as somebody who likes to live my life a little messy and loosely it's way too much fucking work but these are a solid choice in terms of the price you just get what you pay for the third pen that came in 24 out of 35 eggplants are the marvy la pens now these pens scored solidly when it came to bleed through when it came to whether they leave an indentation and whether or not they were scratchy. The pen tip itself is very comfortable, but they scored low on durability. The nib squished really quickly, and they're not comfortable to hold, especially considering how small the pen is. Now that might be because I have a large hand, but my hand, when I use the, I love the color of these pens. I love how they feel with the tip on the paper, but I get super hand crampy when I'm using these pens because they are so small that my hand does not like writing with them for longer. Even doing a swatch page was too much for me. These pens, like the Arteza pens, actually are highlighter safe, and there's not very many of them on this list that are. So if you're taking notes, that could be a good thing for these pens that you can use highlighters on them. They are also lefty test friendly. They actually write on top of colored pencil. They also are one of the few pens that actually have a color name written on them. They may be the only one that actually has the name written on them, not just a number. Now these pens are a little bit higher on the price spectrum, coming in at $1.15 each or $27.54 for a pack of 24, and the 24 colors is the entire line right now, and that includes a set of neons. I, I actually really like Le Pens, except for the fact that they squish and they make my hand hurt, but for short bursts of writing, I think that they're a lot of fun, personally. The fourth and final of these pens that comes in at 24 out of 35 eggplants is one of my longtime favorites, the Papermate Flares Ultra Fine. They also score kind of in the three and the four range on almost everything, except for scratchiness. These pens can be very scratchy, and I think it comes from their tip size, but when it comes to durability, these pens are tits and I think that those kind of go hand in hand because the nib is so strong and so firm <laughs> it doesn't bend but it also scratches so I think it's a trade-off there they are not highlighter safe but they do pass the lefty test they do write on top of colored pencils beautifully these are one of the more expensive pens they run about ten dollars and sixty four cents for a pack of eight or a dollar thirty three each there's only 14 colors which is on the lower end of the color spectrum and these are a little bit harder to come by they are available online at a lot of places but when you go in to a store sometimes you can find them often you can only find their big brother the medium tips but these guys are a little bit Bit more difficult to find which has always been something that's irritated me because these used to be my favorite note-taking pens in high school and college we're moving up into 25 out of 35 eggplants and there are two sets of pens in no particular order that fall into the 25 out of 35 category the big intensity came in 25 out of 35 and it's a pretty awesome pen it came in at five for the ridges on the back side of the paper. There was no ridges, which was really nice. And the lowest score that the Bic Intensity had was a two, and that was on the spooge, where when you put it down, it inks out a little bit. And But the two was the lowest score. Most of the scores are three, four, or five. So it did decently on that. This pen, however, was got a hell no on the highlighter. Like it basically painted with the highlighter. The highlighter turned into its own like puddle of color, which was really irritating. Although it did pass the lefty test. These guys are on the, the less expensive end of pricing. They cost $15.72 for a pack of 20 or about 79 cents a pen. It's got a lower end of color availability. There's 20, I don't even have that pack. I only have a smaller pack. They're fairly decently available. They're a really pretty pen. So as a decent highlighter, if you could go, it could be worse. If you're gonna go for a fine liner, these guys are fairly solid. These are my favorite, the Stabilo 88s. These are not the top scoring pen, but these are my favorite ones. These scored a 25 out of 35, and they scored super low on the spooge. These ones actually did drop a lot of ink 
when you just set the pen down and draw it across, it did drop some ink through. These did wonderful when it came to dry time. They did really well when it came to bleed through, when it came to durability. I find them to be very comfortable, although I can imagine that some people might not because of the octagon shape. These pens did not pass the highlighter test, but they did pass the lefty test. And these are one of the two pens that you can leave uncapped for 24 hours and it won't dry out. There's one other pen on this list that can do that and we'll get to it, but this is the first of the dry safe pens. So if you're looking for a fine liner, if, you're, if you are like me and sometimes you're not great at getting the cap on, you can leave this pen. I did the test. It works over 24 hours if you leave it uncapped. So that's a good thing to know. The Stabilos are decently priced. You can get them at a pack on Amazon for a pack for about 21 bucks. For a pack of 30, it works out to be about 71 cents a pen. They come in 47 different colors. They're fairly decently available. They actually have the color number on the pen, which is super nice. Including, They also have the tip size on the pen. They've got neons. I think the Stabilos are a solid pen. Now we're into the top three. Coming in at 26 eggplants out of 35 is the Papermate Flare, medium point. Now this pen is a long time favorite of mine. I find it to be one of the most comfortable pens for practicing because of the nice fat broad tip. The lowest it scored was on the Spooge Factor. It scored a two, which was its lowest score bleeding through a little bit on that one dot but when it came to the braille on the other side there wasn't any this is one of the most durable pens out there it'll survive a lot of your heavy fist the worst you're going to run into in this pen is when it starts to run dry and these can run dry a little bit faster than some of these other pens can depending on how much you use them I have used these constantly for lettering projects like eight hours a day and I've used them up over the course of like a few weeks eight hours a day of heavy lettering so I don't know if that's going to mean that it dries out faster if I'm just hard on my pens hard on these are like a tank for a pen. They do not pass either the lefty test or the highlighter test. They do smear. They come in 32 different colors. They're about 83 cents a pen. You can get a 24 pack for 20 bucks. And I would argue that of all of these pens, these Papermate flares, even the colorful packs are arguably some of the most available pens out there. Almost every office supply store carries these. The big box stores like Target and Walmart carry these. They're found at craft stores. They're found at art supply stores. They are found in drug stores. Papermate flares, you can find find damn near everywhere so for in terms of accessibility these puppies they are the top now I, you guys I don't need to sing their praises for too long because I really do love these pens for practicing but in my mind they're not my favorite fine liner of all time but they are one of my favorite pens to pull out when I'm working on hand lettering coming in second with 27 out of 35 eggplants is the pilot v razor point I can vouch for how long these pens last I bullet journaled almost exclusively with one of these for over a month and the pen didn't doesn't even look it still feels new so they are a long lasting pen. However, they do not dry quickly. Their lowest score was a one and that was in dry time. They scored a two in bleed through, which is second only to the liquid flares in the most bleed through of the fine liners. So I would find that these pens were good in my bullet journal with the thick scribbles that matter paper, but in my Erin Condren, I'm not as much of a fan of these guys. But for those two low scores, the bleed through and the dry time, this pen scored several fives. It scored a five in the braille. It scored a five in the comfort. It scored a five in the scratchiness and it scored to five in the durability so overall very comfortable very durable pen that just happens to be pretty inky in that same sense it also did not pass the lefty test it did not pass the highlighter test along with the liquid flare this pen only has eight colors and along with the liquid flare this pen is almost one of the most expensive it is a dollar 45 per pen or 11.57 for a pack of eight so expensive moist pen that really performs well otherwise so I like I can't hate on these pens as they scored super high even though they've got definite drawbacks I have found this pen to be very very useful in a lot of ways I would just be very careful with this on paper where you might get some bleed through definitely test this pen before you use it but if you're willing to pony up the money and to sacrifice a bunch of colors it's a solid solid writing pen and then finally the top scoring pen scoring 28 out of 35 eggplants is the Statler tripless fine liner now this should prove to you right here how I was trying my hardest to not be biased because a lot of you know that these are not my favorite pens because I really do not like the triangle shaped barrel. And yet, even with my subjective testing, 
this pen came out on top. Now, if you look at this pen's scores, it did not get more fives than like the Pilot B Razor Point, but it also did not score a single one. It scored one two, and that two was in comfort while holding, which shouldn't surprise you because this barrel is not my favorite, but that's a personal preference, which is how this is all subjective. But while it only scored two fives, and those two fives were in dry time and in how scratchy they are, it scored fours in every other category. Scores four in bleed through, in braille, in the spooge, and in the durability of the pen. This pen also is not highlighter safe, but it does write on color pencils. It is lefty friendly. It has neons, and this is the other pen that you can leave the cap off of for over 24 hours and not have it dry out, which I have tested, and it works really, really well. This pen is also one of the least expensive pens. It's not dirt cheap the way the Arteza pens are or, or, or the Pen Plus Gear, but this pen is 63 cents a pen, 1877 for a pack of 36. There are 48 colors. This pen is fairly available. It's not completely available, but it is more available even than the Stabilos. So you can find this at Michael's and on Amazon and at some office supply stores. I know there's a ton of people who love these pens. And when it comes to vibrancy, I would say that these are some of the more vibrant pens. I would say from my subjective thinking that the most vibrant of all of these pens, not counting the super inky ones like the Piper Mint Liquid Flare and the Pilot V because those two are so inky that it's almost a detriment. But to me, the brightest of all the pens really are the, St the Statlers, the Stabilos, the Flares, and the Lay Pens. But you'll be able to go to my blog post at cindygunterbaldo.com and take a look at the pictures for yourself and decide what color range, what brightness you like the most. Overall though, from this ranking system, the Statlers, they win the day as the the best fine liner. I will link down below the blog post that has the pictures and the spreadsheet so that you can go and look at all of the stuff that we, the data that we collected. I was going to try and find out availability in European countries and in other countries for these pens, but it was, I couldn't, I struggled with it. So if you do know of any of these pens being available or not being available, like especially if they are readily not available in your country, please leave them in the comments down below so that other people can know. And if you have opinions on these pens, please leave them down below because my opinions are just that. They're my opinions. And I'm sure the rest of you guys will have your own opinions. The other thing I will link in the description below is a playlist with all of my fine liner pen reviews if you want to go back and watch detailed reviews on each of them. In the meantime though, like I said, leave your opinion on these fine liners. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time.